Righto. Tonight, this so-called infrastructure package, I mean, it's just a con. We already had $37 billion or thereabouts in the budget already for them to use. What they've done tonight, they've created a new fund. They say it's $5 billion for the recycling assets. They say that because they don't want privatisation because that's a bit dirty to use. But the $5 billion comes from the Building Australia Fund that we established in 2008 and also the Education Infrastructure Fund that we established in. That was there, that money was there for projects that have been recommended by Infrastructure Australia. So that is a nonsense. You then go to what their new projects are. They say they've got new projects of around about $7 billion. But of that, it's a bit more than that. Say seven and a half, let's be generous. $2 billion of that is just a loan to West Connex. So that takes it down to $5.5 billion of new projects. But where does that money come from? That money comes from cuts to rail. $3 billion for the uh, Melbourne Metro project. Let's do a little train here. Doot, doot. Gone. $500 million. Do little train tracks here from Perth public transport projects, light rail and heavy rail, gone. In Queensland, $715 million from uh, the Cross River Rail project, gone. Again, trains, gone, because I don't believe in investing in trains. There's also uh, additional money from Tonsley Park in South Australia, gone, $31 million. But they haven't just cut that, they've also cut the motor vehicle. There's mum and dad in the suburbs in there. The M80 project in Victoria, $500 million. Cut from that. $100 million cut from the Midland Highway in Tasmania. But it's worse than that because the poor little local roads, they got almost a billion dollars cut from local government funding through the Financial Assistance Grants Program. Now, if you're a local council somewhere and you have your funding cut, what's the first thing that you'll hit? You'll hit your local road maintenance. So it'll be a billion dollars gone from that. All up, the cuts are about the same amount or more than this $5.5 billion of so-called new projects. So it's cancelled it out. And then on top of that, you've got $4 billion every time the punter turns up to fill up at the Bowser of his or her car. Every time they get hit, it'll be about $4 billion. So what you have is a so-called infrastructure plan that has only new road money, all of that funded by cuts to trains, cuts to roads, and on top of that, additional revenue through this new tax every time people fill up at the Bowser. Now, if you're in the outer commuter suburbs and you want to travel into the CBD of Sydney and you live out here, or you live on the central coast, we're cutting out funding in trains. We're also making sure, therefore, that you've got to catch, drive your private motor vehicle. And we'll charge you every time you do so. What's worse is, if you're a treasurer in a state government, because they say, oh, well, we don't need to worry about public transport, so we can cut all those things, because the states will fill in. But if you're a treasurer and you have a $1 billion road project, do a little car there, or a $1 billion rail project, and we'll do a little choo-choo train there, we'll pretend it's a steam train, then you would be a complete non if you funded the rail project rather than the road project. 
Because if you put a billion dollars into the road project, you'll get additional money, dollars, from the federal government. But if you put it into rail, you get nothing. So what it will lead over a period of time is a distortion of the market, is a failure in terms of having a transport strategy that deals with urban congestion in our cities. This is a failed plan. It's a con. A complete nonsense in order to distract from the cuts to health care, to education, to pensions that are in this budget from this mean-spirited mob.